Hello, this is 7C, and uh, you can see something new here. Uh, there's actually a video of me down at the bottom. I think it's going to be the right-hand corner. Um, problem with this is, is when I look down here at the screen, I'm not looking at the monitor, or I'm not looking at the webcam. So uh, bear with me with that. So this is 7C. This is going to talk about when genetics goes bad. This is going to talk about uh, genes. A uh, gene is a unit of the DNA that actually codes for a protein. So when the me messenger RNA is written, it's actually the AUG, which is the start one, and then continues to go on sometimes hundreds of thousands of nucleotides, maybe even millions of nucleotides long, all the way until it gets to the stop codon, or one of the three stop codons. So this is the thing that's actually responsible for making the proteins that actually make critters. So it, that's called a gene. This is a, uh, a project to actually map the human genome, which we'll talk more about in genetics also. But it's the human genome landmarks. And this is actually chromosome 4. So this is 4 of the 23 chromosomes that you have in every one of your 6 billion plus cells. I'm sorry, 6 trillion blood cells, blood cells body cells in your body. And as you can see, they've actually selected some genes and they've selected some traits and they've selected disorders that are actually found on four. And we'll talk later on. This is where the centromere adds or attaches to the other chromosome for the sister two sister chromatids. Uh, section above it is called the P after the French petite and the section below is called Q after the letter that follows P. So a little bit of trivia there. The way genes are actually set up here are the 23 pairs. This is more of a genetics kind of a thing. Um, the colors actually so you, show you the, sister, the two sister chromatids that come together. Um, these are already split. And you can see some are long, some are fat, some are short, some are squat. Some have larger P sections, petite sections. Some have almost none. So if we look at the sister chromatid, and then we zoom in on one little section, this would be a gene. And then we have lots of intergenetic regions which don't code for things. It's, uh, we used to code for proteins we no longer use, or um, I'm not sure why it's there. We're not sure why it's there. It may actually protect us from things that come in the future. Um, there's actually maybe something there that would actually code for a, a new virus or a new something else. Okay, mutations. This is when genetics goes wrong. DNA sequence of the gene is changed, and it can be changed a number of different ways. And this results in the creation of something that doesn't make sense to the body, creation of a characteristic or a trait that may not be normal. Um, and it makes a protein that actually is not what's needed. Uh, the, these mutations can be mostly bad. They can have no effect whatsoever. And they can also have good effects. That's maybe how we're getting taller, smarter, and stronger uh, with time. And you can, you know, what dogs look like. You know, dogs all came from a common ancestor, and we actually picked those traits. So we actually found mutations that we liked, and we bred out mutations that we didn't like. Excuse me. A mutagen is the thing that actually causes the mutation. It can be a radioactive element. Um, even x-rays um, that are given. It could be ultraviolet radiation that actually comes from space, or it can be a chemical that you ingest, you breathe in, or you drink, um, or actually just moves systemically right through your skin. So all these things can cause a misread uh, section of me messenger RNA or a miscoded DNA, um, which will code for a, a misread mRNA, all of which uh, can uh, change a protein which can cause really bad things. A couple, couple of ways we can actually make mutations. Uh, one way is called a substitution. Substitution is only when we change one small part or maybe even one nucleotide in a gene. This means that the one nucleotide is read incorrectly and it's written incorrectly and the messenger RNA moves out to the ribosome to make a protein that is not correct. And You can see we have the cytosine and the thymine and the thymine and the messenger RNA. Uh, sorry, the DNA, this is the 3-5 strand. The messenger RNA is going to be a 5-3 strand, remember, and when it reads a, a C, it pulls in a G. And the uh, helicase, the DNA helicase, messenger RNA helicase will come in and zoom this uh, backbone made of the phosphate and the sugar um, in a 5-3 direction, but it will be read correctly in this case. 
And then if you notice the, the second thymine change into a cytosine, and it can be a couple of different ways, but basically the nucleotide changes. And it could be the three codons. It could actually be a large line of 100 codons, but it's usually um, a very small area or it's one nucleotide at a time, like in this case. Instead of getting GAA in the messenger RNA, we're now getting GAG, which uh, we don't. I don't have a codon chart in front of me. Um, it could actually code for the same protein, which is uh, one type of mutation. It could code, co uh, code for a, a different one to make somebody stronger. It could code for one that actually makes a different shape protein for hemoglobin, like in sickle cell. Sometimes these are called point mutations, and we'll talk about some point mutations. I'll even show you a, a video called Cracking the Code, uh, which is going to talk about Tay-Sachs. Um, but sickle cell is another example, and there are other examples of point mutations. Here's an example of a point mutation. If you take a look at it, um, we're supposed to have this CAA here, which uh, codes for an amino acid. Um, and then we actually replace the C with an A, and we code for a different amino acid. And again, this may cause a bad problem, it may cause a good problem, or may cause no problem whatsoever. Here is an example of a person uh, with a DNA sequence that's supposed to actually code for uh, use. And then we have another person that has a T in that location, a third person has a C in that location. And you can see here's the normal protein, the normal ribbon being this shape, and no negative effects. And then we actually maybe have this one, which will have no real change in it. And then we have this person, and we actually get a misshapen protein. And this could lead uh, into diseases like Tay-Sachs or sickle cell or even, um, I'm sorry, those are genetic diseases. Or it could actually lead to other, other diseases like lung cancer or something that's really bad. Okay, we do have what are called missense mutations. These are ones that actually, and if you take a look, we actually have the amino acid his, 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 because we have cat, 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 cat as the codon. And we actually go in on this one, and we change the A to a C, and this actually comes up with a different protein. But our different amino acids, which may actually give to a different protein. So this is called the missense, when we actually change from one, we only change one protein, uh, amino acid uh, replacing one from another, and it may not be the correct one. Missense. Nonsense ones that are ones that don't make sense. This is when we actually change the format of the DNA and the associated amino acid or a codon, and we actually change it to a stop codon, which is eventually is, essentially is going to make this uh, protein non usable. So that's called a nonsense. Substitu or a substitution. And we could have silent ones. These are ones that actually code for the same amino acid. Um, you can take, if you remember those char charts, you can take serine, which is actually found down here. So it could be an AGC or an AGU. It's also found up here for a UCU, UCC, UCA, UCG. So if we actually change this last one, it doesn't make any it make a difference, but if we actually take those and change those two, uh, we can code for the same amino acid, which means the protein is still going to be created the correct way. We can also have what are called deletions. Deletions make sense. We take that U U U, and we actually and this is called the wild type, and this is the five three strand of the messenger my th five three strand of the messenger RNA wild type. This is the way it's supposed to be. We can take those three uracils and we can actually replace, uh, take one out and then move this whole other set. So instead of AUG, AAG, UUU, GGC, UAA, we end up with the same start, end up with the same first amino acid, but we may actually end up, because instead of UUU, we now have UUG, we may actually get a different amino acid. And what it does, it actually changes all the um, material that follows. And this is actually what's called a left shift, because it actually pulls the material to the left. And this eventually could lead to an, al an altercation, altered, uh, I hate when I do that, alteration in the amino acid sequence, which could actually change the protein. Additions are the same sort of thing, except now we're going to add something in. Um, these are what are called right shifts. And it basically pulls everything um, off to the right. 
So this pulls it towards the left. This pushes it towards the right. And instead of UAG, AAG, we now have UAA. And this changes everything down here um, by pushing things this direction rather than pulling things that way. And again, it could actually change uh, the amino acid sequence in a protein, causing it to be a mutant. Deletions and additions are actually called frame shifts. Okay, what happens in a mutation? Some of them can be good. You can see this bird's trying to get this worm, but its beak doesn't allow it. So it would, the worm would actually have to be fairly close to the bark or the outside uh, for this bird to uh, get the worm. This worm with a longer bill actually can reach all the way in and get that worm. So what may happen is that this one may actually not make it. Uh, it won't reproduce correctly, but there may have been one with a longer bill that actually is more successful and does reproduce. And the next generation has a longer bill, and the next generation has a longer, and eventually we end up with a, a, a changed critter. They can basically reach almost all the way into the tree. Some mutations can be bad. Uh, sickle cell anemia um, seems to be actually be uh, a problem when the sh in the shape of the uh, blood cell, the red blood cell, and it's caused by hemoglobin, which is an Hb protein, and the Hb protein actually changes. It's a point source, and it changes into the sickle cell shape. And the problem with that is that actually, if you take a look at these nice, round, smooth cells, they make it through uh, veins and arteries and even the capillaries one cell at a time or one red blood cell at a time to make it to the cells to, for oxygen, food, and taking away waste. These tend to get caught in these smaller vessels uh, which basically can cause anemia which means you're not getting everything you're supposed to get down here and it can cause lots of really bad pain especially in joints. So it may be a bad one. Um, what it does do, if you take a look, sickle cell, if we talk about uh, malaria, which is caused by uh, a bacteria uh, produced by or actually moved from one location or another by a mosquito, and we actually take a look at it, and you can see um, one out of 15 of these sickle cell develop the malaria. And then the people with regular red blood cells, 14 out of 15. In other words, one didn't. So that one right there may be this one right here, and these 14 are actually these 14. So there seems to be an advantage to have sickle cell. Even though it may cause early death, and even though it may cause pain, maybe you may live longer because you don't die of malaria. And then you can see some other examples in here. And malaria is found primarily in Africa, and the folks that actually came from these parts of Africa. And we'll talk about it in genetics with the mutation, but it's a, it's a relatively... Um, up to maybe 15 and 20 percent of the population in Africa and uh, probably not so much in other areas. You can actually see that there's no malaria in here. These are the desert areas and of course you don't get mosquitoes and of course these are the rainforest from high rain so you got standing water and mosquitoes. And some mutations may have no change whatsoever called silent mutations. GAA, GAG, both pretty much co um, code for the same amino acids, so the protein's not changed. And that's where we stop. And that was 7C. Thanks for stopping by. Adios.